And joining us now is Ukraine's ambassador to the U.S., Oksana Makarova. Madam Ambassador, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, I was so eager to talk to you to get your reaction to this visit by Vladimir Putin to Ukraine, first to Crimea, then to Mariupol. Um, one a territory seized by Russia, the other a city conquered by Russia. A brutal battle. Yes, th thank you very much, Andrea, for having me, and thank you for paying attention to this brutal war, which we all uh, know that is a threat to Ukraine, but also a threat to security everywhere. Uh, it's appalling, actually, that uh, uh, a president who is a war criminal, President Putin, uh, now with the order for arrest, is uh, uh, during the night uh, covertly visiting the territory which illegally is occupied uh, by the invading forces. Uh, and, uh, you know, just, just a year after Mariupol has been attacked and brutally destroyed. And I want to remind our viewers that it's a large Ukrainian city, very successful Ukrainian city of the size of Tampa, Florida, with more than 400,000 people living there peacefully before the war started in 2014. Uh, and we were able to defend it in 2014 and 15. And now Russian Federation and Putin's uh, military uh, war crime uh, perpetrators completely destroyed the city. Uh, so we, we have seen it. So it, it is, in a sense, you know, um, he's self-documenting again his war crimes by visiting uh, Mariupol and clearly showing, like he visited uh, Crimea, and clearly showing that it's, it's not a mistake, all these atrocities, and it's, it's not, it, it's done according to what he and his commanders uh, you know, wanted to do. But also let's remind that uh, Hitler also visited Paris in, in 1940, and uh, that didn't really help him. So Paris, as the rest of the Europe, were liberated from Nazis, and uh, Ukraine will be liberated from Russian invaders. Now, the Secretary of State today reacted to the Chinese President Xi visiting Moscow and dismissed any peace proposal or ceasefire that does not remove Russian troops from occupied territory. I want to play that for you. Calling for a ceasefire that does not include the removal of Russian forces from Ukrainian territory would effectively be supporting the ratification of Russian conquest. It would recognize Russia's attempts to seize the sovereign neighbor's territory by force. It would enable Russia to further entrench positions in Ukraine and a ceasefire now without a durable solution would allow President Putin to rest and refit his troops and then restart the war at a time more advantageous to Russia. But how concerned are you, Madam Ambassador, about the impact on the global south and potentially on allies like Germany and France of this so-called peace initiative, which the U.S. is saying is not a peace initiative, but which could have a significant propaganda value for Xi and for Putin? Well, first of all, there is a peace in initiative on the table for a long time since President Zelensky proposed his 10-step peace formula long ago. And that peace initiative is a very solid plan, uh, which is very uh, straightforward, uh, which starts with... Uh, Russian Federation stopping its aggressive war and pulling out from Ukrainian territory. And there are other steps in that formula. And that formula has been widely supported by, of course, our friend number one, United States, but also with, with everyone who believes in territorial integrity and sovereignty. And we hear repeatedly uh, China's uh, leader referring to those uh, principles being very important for China. So there is a peace formula on the table. Uh, we are ready to discuss it with everyone. We truly hope that other countries who until now did not vote to support it at the at the level of UN will join and will discuss it. <clears throat> so, you know, we of course are watching carefully and very attentively this visit. Uh, but again, you know, we have to all focus on what is the true he truth here. There is no dispute between us and Russia. Uh, there is no conflict or territorial or whatever dispute. It's an aggressive war of authoritarian nuclear power uh, that attacked peaceful Ukraine, and it's an unprovoked, unjustified war. And it has to, any peace talks should start from Russian Federation stopping their war and getting out from our territory. Now, the International Criminal Court that you referred to, it, uh, it won't have any immediate impact because 
Uh, first of all, Russia is not, an, not a treaty signatory to it, neither is the U.S., for that matter. But he would have to go and actually be arrested, which is unlikely in the immediate future. But the Yale Observatory Group has remarked, the head of that group has remarked that these children, uh, that we're at a pivotal point, that if they are not rescued soon from Russian-controlled territory or Russia itself, that they may never get back, back to their parents. How, how concerned are you about that? Very concerned. You're absolutely right that, uh, uh, you know, this uh, arrest warrant might not be executed tomorrow, but I think it's very, it's, it, it has an effect. It has an effect for everyone who believes in, in dignity and, and human rights and everyone who understands. And I think you don't even need to be a parent to understand that you cannot kidnap and steal children. You know, it's... Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a constant day of amber alert for Ukrainian parents who know that their children have been taken to, to Russia, who know that they are being tortured literally there, whether it's getting putting them through this re-education, as they call them, schools, or um, taking them far and, and telling them lies about their own country and parents. Uh, and we cannot even exclude a physical uh, violation of their rights or, or, or torturing uh, of these children. So it's a very pressing issue. And I think it's symbolic that the first uh, arrest warrant is issued exactly for these crimes, for Putin and, and his uh, co-conspirators. But we really hope that it's it's not the last one, because there are so many war crimes. And as of uh, last week, there were already 74,992 individual criminal cases registered in Ukraine of war crimes or crimes related to war crimes. And it's only in Ukraine. In addition to that, there are other countries that are having their own investigations and plus international courts. So we have to work faster. We have to, uh, all of us, all people who believe in these principles, to join forces to get more support to Ukraine and more sanctions to Russia so that we can faster get to just peace and faster get these children back and all of our Ukrainians who are in, in Russian prisons or, uh, you know, we don't know their fate yet.